Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our regular Monday stream. I hope you're all doing well out there, all you tiny GCHQ people in my computer. Hello. Hello. Hello, our little glow-in-the-dark friends. Hello. Um, <laughs> ah, it's uh, it's it's rather warm in the UK. It's not unbearably warm. Honestly. I don't know what you're on, but I'm frozen. No, oh, you're always cold, Evelyn. I'm cold as ice. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, willing to sacrifice. Um. But anyway, it's uh, it's it's good. It's good to be back. Um, on this apparently dangerously hot day. <laughs> it is a dangerous day to be a Thiexton. It is a dangerous day. To be a decent but, uh, plan, yes. I suppose we've got a lot to cover this evening, and we're probably going to go through it at quite a bit of a pace. You will not press F for Bunga Bunga Man, because you will press F for Uncle Ted, which is yes. the first thing I was going to say. But of course, on top of that, thank you to all the folk that come to the streams and interact with them and talk in the chat and do the super chats and the super stickers and sometimes donate to us via your PayPal, which is the kind of main direct source we have at the moment. Because the entropy and all the other things are a bit poo and it, don't want to work. It's not great for UK stuff. I will no. Say. Um, so and we, we're, we're, we're already like paying a serious uh, amount of what we make out of this stuff, which is a pittance in tax anyway. So yeah, we we get thirty percent and thirty percent again because I don't want to file US taxes. It's not worth it. Um, but if you do want to donate via YouTube, we are still monetized on that somehow. It's because um, we love the nation of Israel. Yes. Uh, thank you, Melon, for the $2. Uh, never forget. And yes, can we get some Fs in the chat, please, for Unky Ted? Yes. Uh, poor, poor Unky Ted. Anyway, I think we best start oh, getting you, moving. Uh, oh. one, one more thing. Um, I would also like to show the fact oh. that we, we do have something this week on the Substack. Uh, I, as well, should hopefully have something tomorrow, if you don't mind giving a quick thing I put up for the normal stuff I read. Uh, yes, I just yes. need a second set of eyes on it to make sure. Yes. It won't be the most uh, detailed, impactful speech you've ever read, but I do believe the proposition I'm putting forward is one that's rather important. And also, and something we kind of discussed here and there, you did a little thing on Brexit and the commercial side. Yes. Uh, which is sort of interesting in and of its own because it's something that really a lot of people haven't want to come to terms with. They still want to no. cope about it. There's still it. a lot of cope about the the former political projects of the populist right, let's say. There's a lot of cope that surrounds <clears throat> the Trump stuff. There's a lot of cope that still surrounds Brexit. And there will be, at some point, a later thing on Brexit and sovereignty and whatnot, but all in good time. We but yes, get, but there is... We shall get on to what we're doing. There is actually written content coming out, though, guys. We promised, and here it is. Previously, diametrically opposed movements to the right were constantly folded into it. Women's suffrage in the 1910s and 30s, you know, totally integrated in World War One and World War Two. Yes, to, to, to the point it becomes a, a quote-unquote settled issue. Which then became the opening for race-based stuff during the war, which then became civil rights in the 60s and 80s, and then, you know, that whole cultural just sweep of what we can only refer to as negrolatry. Yes. Every time this has happened, the right has become weaker to the point that every 20 years or so it becomes unrecognisable. The left moving left does not move the neutral position on its own. The new normal is actually codified by the right, as seen by Eisenhower embracing limited intervention in the post-World War II world, after the kind of staunch isolationism of the pre-war Republicans, and also Reagan's incorporation of civil rights as the cause of the right by creating federal MLK Day, uh, as so aptly recognised by the essay we talked about by Samuel Francis. I mean, it's, it's a very simple thing, and it's, I think it's something that people didn't quite realise when we first read that Francis essay. It's like, this isn't just about the fact that like, MLK Day is an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment because nowadays MLK is the civil rights hero of the right wing, and the left themselves have decided that Actually, MLK was a cis Christian X, Y, or Z from a period back when he would have hated gay people, so he's not progressive enough now. We've got to move on to the next thing. Yes, and a big part of that is the fact that you have any any movement in the position of the right are always portrayed as the belated admission that they were on the wrong side of history. A large part of it is them basically tacitly admitting by quote-unquote conceding the point 
that they were never right in the first place. Yeah. How has the woke movement, and especially the trans movement, made supposedly conservative outlets defend and extol the Quality Act 2010, one of the centrepieces of the late Blair Brown government, and the linchpin of how woke could exist in any legal sense in the first place, to the point that radical feminism that we'd have seen, you know, in the 90s as like, you know, Julie Bindle, you'd have just laughed at, yeah. is now a, this deep conservative thinker, and she's involved in the free speech movement, which you know deep down someone like Julie Bindle does not give a shit about. Like, that whole idea is just so funny to me. Yeah, there is the, the <clears> idea that, again, we're, we're not going to try and comment and audit the beliefs of a lot of the people we're talking about here. Most of them are known. Most of these people are, at best, like radio for, like, liberal Democrats. Mm. And they are, at worst, like, the actual howling misandrists that people are complaining about in the past. I've got a little bit of that because there's a one from like a what was it like one of the women's shelter pressure groups that just has some absolutely awful stuff um, on their website. But, to, but and we don't need to, I think, re-emphasize this point too much because we've discussed it on the channel. I think this is one of the probably the few places where people have been genuinely receptive to the talking point of how many of these issues have been a distraction. So we're just going to quickly fire hose your eyeballs with like. I don't know what we got here, about half a dozen or so different sort of, you know, oh, uh, UK National Health Service banning puberty blockers, which we'll get into because yeah. it's not actually happened. And no, that's <laughs> not really happened. There's been a deluge of quote unquote anti woke victories in the past two weeks. Yes. Really, in the past year, we've seen a lot of this as we've talked about the fact that the woke is being put away. This is one of the practical outgrowths that now the quote-unquote gender-critical movement is is currently attempting some sort of victory dance it's... in the defeat of the the T part of LGBT, but also the, the, woke, the woke agenda in general. And it's disastrous. It is one of the worst things that could have happened for the, for the, uh, the British right. Because as we explained in the intro, all of this is them being folded into it. But we have... So many links in. Yeah. I'm just looking I mean, at them. Next one is uh, Daily Mail. The penny on the trans issue has dropped. Yeah. And by, print. Has the penny Pierce. finally dropped on the trans issue? Uh, 17th of April, 2023. The leading Tories pronounce, uh, pounced on St Keir Starmer's desperate attempt to deflect the accusation that he was incapable of defining here, a woman. Here comes an even better one, though, uh, from Telegraph. The cult of gender ideology is finally disintegrating. These are mainly by... Uh, kind of center left um, columnists who are put onto places like the Daily Mail, the Telegraph, or on people her. attached to like that weird like SDP group of people, yes. or like your conservative home. You know, essentially people who have been nobodies in newspapers that have been paid because they have some legacy position, really, and now they have some sort of use they can provide to the regime because they're e able to totally stay within the the remit of what's acceptable, whilst also like BTFOing the troons, which is what so much of this just seems to be about. Like the this... next one's is based Sunak, uh, as tweeted out by uh, the Free Speech Union. I well, as, as we get into this, all of this stuff is not a victory. It is in fact a crushing defeat of the most humiliating kind, and we will explain to you in in in, in torturous stark reality why that is. Yeah, I mean we don't end. we don't have this whole thing is a completely shut and closed case but there's so much stuff linked to all of this remember as well the free speech union here of course putting the victory banner out about this yes. kind of stuff uh, again the, the again yeah rishi sunak has indicated he would challenge the law to protect single sex spaces for women saying biological sex is fundamentally important here's where the arbitration comes in we're seeing a lot of this in all the different places that the agenda of the quote-unquote political right the entire project of the political right has become the protection of single sex spaces in a civil rights sense and quote unquote the safeguarding of women and girls as the mantra of kind of the modern post cameron mums net feminist movement we don't have time to explain to you in detail if you're not immersed in it to a degree the the state or the absolute state really of the quote unquote uk feminist movement currently and at the same time both in <clears throat> the uk and america 
there's obviously there's an obvious case of that shooting in the Christian school. Uh, oh, that be about a month ago now. But at the same time, there's all these ones that be like X, Y, or Z. I think that's just I yeah, that's just that's grab just the archive link article, there, yeah. the article. X, Y, or Z well, pedophile now says there are women. X, Y, Z murderer now says there are women. So we're in a women's pre- and there, there must have been about four or five of these since the start of the year. Yes, they have. In the UK, we're getting these stories. I've not actually put it up because uh, the stories have disappeared behind the EU wall and they weren't uh, archived. But if you if you just search uh, like transgender kills father in America, there's wall to wall coverage of a lot of like domestic murders in which one party may or may not have identified as non-binary or something. There was a large amount of narrative in both British and American media mainstreaming all of this stuff and just the sheer amount well, of it. I can tell as well that this stuff is being <clears throat> pushed because my mum, of all people, who is no by no means like massively into any of this stuff, she almost sort of avoids it yeah. on a barge pole, has mentioned these stories specifically to me because she knows the issues I've had to try to get medical stuff sorted. And then all of a sudden she's reading stuff like, oh, here's this, ne- this, that, or the next pedophile or murderer who's now receiving all sorts of treatment in prison, or at least supposedly is what we're being told. A lot of this stuff, if, if people are aware of the, the very slow nature of the NHS and the clogged nature of especially the gender care pathway in the wake of a lot of the essentially politicising and propagandising of the issue, is that this, this doesn't make sense. None of this really makes sense. It's obviously being done to annoy you, to infuriate you, because within a quote-unquote neutral system, this wouldn't take hold. <laughs> but yeah, we've got more examples. The inner sort of nonsense inside the whole Scottish Parliament, and then you've got an example here for, I think it was with Scottish Labour. Uh, what more have we got here? I mean, this is one example I picked out. This is this Kathleen Stock woman who... Well, we'll, just, we'll quickly sorry, just go yeah. through this, sorry. And right on cue, a senior Labour woman is forced to withdraw from a meeting about the Sex and Equality Act because of a complaint deemed it transphobic. Again, this is more of the stuff we're talking about, which has been happening today about the the debate about the 2010 what Equality way, Act. What way to cut the sort of civil rights yeah. conundrum here? Because what they've done is set up, probably with some sort of intention, a legislation sort of loophole that can really only be solved by arbitration. Yeah. And there is a lot of pretending going on in both you know, both sides of the debate. Not that we really mean it in that sense, but to make it seem as if, you know, there is some reasoned way that they're going about this and it isn't just about chopping and changing legislation as it sees fit to sort other things within the regime. Well, it's just a huge push to try and make the Equality Act look quote unquote based on gender issues yes. it's going to go from the you know terrible equality act that makes you know race arbitration a nightmare within all uk businesses to ha ha the based equality act says that you're not a woman mm. and that's the, again this this is the outgrowth this is the practical impact of making trans activists and quote unquote woke people so unpleasant is you can posit what was previously the bleeding edge of your controversial agenda as a conservative point. And we're actually going to get to a point in some of the articles later in different cases where they actually say this. Yes, they actually just keep saying this, but from the opposite direction. Uh, I mean, the other side of the coin as well is that there is so much of this that is so blatantly astroturfed. Yes. You... This is one I just picked out the other week. All of a sudden, I've never heard of this woman, but... Next minute, she's on LBC, Times Radio, Talk TV, Channel 4. She's in documentary here. She's in GB, but, you know, good GB News. Good morning, good morning Britain. Britain. Yeah. And she, Talk TV with Julie Hartley, a brewer. She's been uh, speaking at the Oxford Union and was, of course, disrupted by some unruly trans activists, which seems to have happened to about, I don't know, about half a dozen of these people in the last month, who, you know, it would almost seem to me like part of your budget for... You know, managing someone who is a TERF, as like a media mogul person, you'd be like, oh yeah, we need to set aside 1,500 quid to play some loony to come in during your talk, because otherwise no one would hear about it if they didn't disrupt you or cancel you. Well, it's, I, I hate to say the G word, but this is very reminiscent of what happened during the, uh, the heady days of Gamergate, but in a weird position 
where the say of the same people are now cheering on the same feminists. Mm. It is as as I put here, new gender celebrities, same old professional. Yes, victims. I thought I thought it was a very good way of framing it actually. It, and that's what this is. Whether you like it or not, someone like Mario Yiannopoulos became a right wing professional victim. That is all he was, and that's why he didn't accomplish anything. That and he sniffed a load of people's money up his nose, which is which is <laughs> what we keep, which is what we keep telling people. He wasn't uh, someone who was disappeared by the establishment. He completely shat the well, bed. Look at all those be Laura Loomers, Nick yeah. Fuentes originally. All of these people were basically an outgrowth of sort of twenty fifteen to twenty seventeen media management to make sure there was a subset of personalities around the Trump sphere. I know there is this woke going away sort of move. We have all these new personalities being cooked up well, to make all this stuff work. Kathleen Stock, Maya Forrester, um, Posey Parker, Caroline Julie Farrell, Bindle, Julie, yeah. Julie Bindle oh, getting heated up from the the the, the freezer of, of the, the sex wars in the 80s. That, that one in New Zealand that got attacked. Another one in France. That was Posey got Parker attacked, again. Yeah. Uh, and then we have here the... Well, this is the one you were talking about. Trans yes. activist who disrupted Kathleen Stock, his daughter, a four-day work week council boss. It's very important to realise that a lot of what you see on the news, especially when it comes to a lot of this gender-critical stuff, is two classes of professional activists constantly both suing and performatively disrupting each other. All whilst at the same time acting as a massive consent manufacturing operation. It's also just a massive money grip. Well, no, that, that's, there's that too there, but as, as you well know, it's something we try to avoid is just always looking at the money aspect of it because that's sometimes one of the strongest distractions that there is for this stuff. Yes, but it's it's a powerful motive. It's how the, they manage to have like a factory floor of Sorry, these I'm, people. I'm longingly staring at the distance because I can hear the rain and I'm getting a bit of cool air. It's quite nice. <laughs> you can smell the rain here. But the, uh, that's a very, very big point that you must remember that I went through my permissible activism thing, that these are two groups of professional activists, one of which are 1970s style professional political lesbian misandrous, that like the actual bra burners. Mm. And on the other, you've got posited as the boo, the heel side yes. is the uh, the trans activist. I mean, there's another one here from Twitter that I just found funny from fucking unheard. If Mizzy can get on Newsnight, why can't Maya Forrester or Kelly J. Keen? <laughs> I don't even know who that last one is. Uh, that's the other woman that was doing the... This is, of course, written by... The Doc Stock woman. Yeah, yeah, Kathleen Stock. Uh, who's working with Kelly G. Keen to do the Gender Wars thing on Channel. Ah, it's all, it's all pish. Pro- project Lesbian, Unheard. But as we all know, and I think people should be well aware of by now, Unheard, post-millennial, post-liberal, all of these sites are dominated by these weird turf women. It seems to be one of the main groups that writes for all of these yes, things. Yes, you, you will find uh, Spiked Online... A lot of that, the Spectator, the Daily Mail and the Telegraph especially. Well, I'm just thinking unheard because it's a new one. It's meant to be trendy. You know, it's, it's very heavily pushed by Twitter. Oh, big lightning. Yes, the the <laughs> alt media stuff, especially in kind of UK bent stuff, is saturated, inundated with I mean, all, all I th- of the I gender, think you've got gender critical a, narrative. half a dozen here issue for this, don't you? Well, there's so many here. Here's Unheard's entire feminism vertical. Women are pawns in the contraception. J.K. Rowling. The why, battle over Why should feet. lesbians sleep with men by Kathleen Stock? Yeah, <laughs> I was hounded out of Oxfam. Uh, the Oxfam kids are all right. Why should lesbians sleep with men? The God. facial attractiveness of victim and how uh, women colorized yoga. Why is this in Unheard? Um, did uh, did City Uni censor my gender research? Don't worry, we'll get to that one in a moment. <laughs> is trans the new anorexia? What? Oh, like all of like all of these. This is supposed to be one of the premier kind of dissident uh, outlets, and all they're becoming doing becoming a woman is an unappealing business. Bro. All they're doing is is continuously amplifying these mediocre. 90s, you know, maybe 70s to 90s style feminists who are writing these tepid uh, think pieces about how they are a woman and women's rights. And that is what passes for... Yeah, I see. Someone, someone's asking the AA question. Who is unheard for? Um, GCHQ, I believe. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I was going to say, you've got... Uh, the SMP wants one. silence. Yeah. Women. There's so much here. Uh, oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! What we need is some uh, some background noise. Here. There we go. 
Um, I believe that's now working. Just, just look at it. Look at it. As a women be... won't wish. Yeah, the Daily, Daily Wire. Wire Radi garbage. Uh, radical feminists won't stop speaking out against harm transgender policies due who, to women's who rights. Who wrote this one? Uh, this was written by Charlotte Pence Bond. <laughs> oh, oh my! I mentioned to very expensive school for unheard. Daily Mail. Maureen Callahan, how hateful, smug, and sanctimonious trans swimmer Leah <laughs> Thomas Jesus. is now telling women what feminism is. But if I'm right in saying all the ones you picked here as well are basically all from the last like, six months. But, I mean, the, the, the there idea... There is no of, free speech in Britain for gender-critical feminists. The idea that they're throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks doesn't even begin to like, cover it. Three, <laughs> this is from December 23. Three cheers for Turf Island. In 2022, Britain's gender-critical feminists scored one some stunning victories against well, trans ideology. This is well, I, I think I put a note in it about the... GB News. Twitter oh, posts GB News. around. GB News. Oh, GB no. News. Oh, get it off. Get it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's just everywhere. There's so um, much of it. I was going to say, the, there was a one going around on Twitter a couple of weeks ago where they were like, yeah, eh... Uh, the UK is the online hub for transphobia and like folk were like, ha ha, get it up you, like celebrating on Twitter. And I'm kind of like, well, is that really what you want to be proud of? Is that you've got a nation of people who are at least ostensibly, as we are told, obsessed with this stuff? Yes. How in any way, shape or form is that good, either positive or negative? All of this stuff should terrify you because the entire dialectic has been around wokeness and especially trans issues now the wokeness and the trans issues are being put away and the radical feminists are being credited with conservative victories yes. and being fully folded into the pantheon of conservative belief this is how the ratchet turns not from the left but from the right yeah i think you've got a couple more spiked ones here as well and then a couple um, that's about uh, posey parker as well obviously being very obviously uh astroturfed Oh. And there's there's chief pathetic man in the charge, uh, Matt Walsh, who just like any time there's a a video or picture of him that's not directly on his face, just looks like an incredibly weedy man to me. He does. He does look rather weedy. But the I did want to mention quickly. Matt he also Walsh thinks the, the Elamals are totally real. Yes, Matt sorry Walsh, to, to beat you to the punch there. Yeah, Matt, Matt Walsh is uh, is like full blue beam priest in residence right now telling you that if you don't believe in the aliens that you've been brainwashed well his next film's going to be what is an extraterrestrial <laughs> <laughs> well I, I wanted to talk about the what is a woman thing and the define woman thing because it's become such a talking point and it's such a nonsense it's like the 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 elite have said that the sky's green and now you're spending like every waking moment creating documentaries about the fact that the sky is in fact blue and sometimes grey when it's cloudy. Yeah. But that's all they need to do. If if you are like a lot of the kind of low hanging fruit leftists do, like they go after the flat earth people. It's like going after flat earth people. You yes. don't actually accomplish anything because you've been drawn into the insanity. Well, the, I, the, I, the, 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 to engage in this dialectic is to lose. You probably hear some very, very ambient. Yeah, so it probably radar. sounds like we're currently coming from uh, the middle of the jungle in Da Nang. <laughs> <laughs> but there was the whole nonsense as well last week that oh, uh, Matt Walsh is going to upload uh, what is a woman to Twitter, and Elon said it would be okay. But then they had some rogue, rogue staff members that made sure it got suppressed. It's like, yeah. oh god, shut up. Well, this is, again, spiked, because I could just do this whole thing with Spike and fucking Brendan O'Neill. And... All, we need, Joe, all we need here is the subtitle, According to Hope Not Hate. There you go. We've yeah. already been over the fact that Hope Not Hate at this point now is a tired operation that is being rolled up, and if anything, is being used for purely like heal energy. Uh, thank you for the $5 there, Paul Moose, but saying, uh, I saw a WNBA ad in Las Vegas, and it read, the only problem with the WNBA that you're not watching <laughs> is that you're not watching. Women, it's never their fault. Ah, uh, yes. Very, uh, uh, Supreme Emperor Kizza, thank you for the five pounds there. I have a cure for all this cancer. I call it the Doom Guy policy. <laughs> Rip and tear. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, you go ahead and do that, mate. Yeah. Have, <laughs> have, have, have fun being Doom Guy. Um, I'm I'm sure I'm sure that'll all work out fine. 
But yeah, yeah you, but, yeah, but yeah, you've but got yeah. another spectator one here about. Oh well, th- this is. Or th- th- is there more of this one you want to go through? Oh no, no, I've I've moved on now. This is the um, Posey Parker stuff. Yeah. Because really, Posey Parker has basically become like feminist Milo Yiannopoulos. It's the exact same tired stuff of going round to universities and go look at well look at the tolerant left. Does that mean she likes black women and? Was a pawn shop for like opiates or something instead of? Co- I I have no idea. But again, this has been. If you move in these circles, this once again has been saturation level, and it's kind of funny. Spite going. Is it now far right to be a feminist? According to Hope, not hey again. Standing up for women's rights makes you a dangerous extremist. But again, it's not the the entire point here. Isn't to smear the quote unquote gender critical people. It's to push the idea that they are part of the right. Yes. To the right themselves. Therefore, or, they or become the, diluted by 1970s radical feminists. Or at the very least, these people are your, are your allies in the combating the left. And, and here he is, Brendan O'Neill. In The Spectator, the shameful persecution of Posey Parker on New Zealand. How's about we shamed you and persecuted you for being a nonce? How's about that, Brendan O'Neill? But, but the, the problem with Brendan O'Neill is he gets so much funding for so many different places. I um, wonder why. <laughs> I wonder if it's maybe because he enjoys certain things to do with children. Uh, well, he certainly enjoys certain things to do with Pfizer. Um, <laughs> yeah, he got the Pfizer wiggle. He, he got the Pfizer wiggle. No, he did get the <laughs> Pfizer sponsorship on on the uh, on the on the content though, basically. But God. Um, Here's, here's kind of my last one, because this brings us towards some of the framing we'll have later on, but you want to go over another quick one, which, again, doesn't really make a massive amount of sense. But anyway, uh, anti-trans bathroom sign removed from Dundee train station. Uh, anti-trans sticker designed to look like official signage has been removed from the Dundee train station, blah, blah, blah. But the, the big thing is that it mentions the Equality Act and the provision of single-sex services. It's something that Posey Parker's group denied doing, but it's interesting that even at this stage, back in 2019, mm. that the Equality Act was already being invoked by those who kind of identify as gender critical, as it were. That this is still a a large part of the the, the pantheon of the civil rights feminist yes. is that the, the Equality Act will save them because the government will step in and it will it will answer the what is a woman question because people cannot be left to answer that themselves. Uh, again, we'll get into the implications of that site later on. But once again, if you understand anything, that should uh, yeah. worry you. I mean, this is another quick one here. We'll not go through this entire thread, but this is a woman, Caroline Farrell, who again I hadn't heard of until last week, and all of a sudden this thread was everywhere on Twitter, and everyone was saying, "Oh, this is horrible." And what it appears to be, at least as far as I can tell is she's gone after some weirdo called Stephanie Hayden on Twitter and may or may have not said things that may or may not constitute transphobia, mischief, whatever nonsense it is. But in this thread, she's suggesting that the local police that the case is being handled under have taken devices away from her, have said that you know she needs permission if you want to own more than one SIM card, all these sort of measures that you would expect to be applied to Pedophiles and terrorists generally, like massive, massive connections between, say, you know, a miscommunication act and a terrorism act to show that you as an individual can be sort of almost legally by a court declared no longer allowed to go near a computer. Yeah. And this, you know, very, very rarely does the UK government ever do this, even with people who are, you know, serial pedophiles or terrorists or anything like that. Meanwhile, this woman that said some nasty stuff supposedly on Twitter is receiving these kind of court orders which to me makes no sense, and there's only two explanations for this. She's either completely talking at her arse, or this is a massive overreach by that police force and a deliberate one, knowing fair well that they'll have to roll it back, and what they can do when they roll it back is put their hands up and say, it was the activists that did it. It was the activists that made us do it. The problem is that Stephanie Hayden's somebody who's appeared in all like the trans stupid stuff for a long time. There's somebody who tried to become a media personality, kind of failed, and then got into these endless lawsuit slap fights with these generally Catholic, I think, uh, activist women. Mm. And the problem is this becomes an activist storm of claim and counterclaim. 
in which people talk about their lawsuits in a way that like they are life and death instances. Yes. It's another kind of example of these spiraling uh, activist, counter-activist lawsuit, harassment claim, counter-harassment claim. I find this weird as well. She's like, oh, yeah, I've been advised that posting the thread about what the police are doing to me is a bad idea, which of course it is. That goes without saying. But she's then made a tweet about how it's bad, but then left it up anyway, and then goes on to some ramble about Jesus and Christ and this and the next thing. It's like, well, anyone who was actually worried about what would happen to them in an ensuing trial would not tweet about it like this. No. At least to me. Uh, the whole thing about like following Christ's example of being falsely accused is also not something like a like a normal Christian would say because that's uh, for the most people that's eye rolling but if you're really really into Jesus that's also like borderline blasphemy <laughs> and in the same sense as well she's got a sort of a bit of a, her own personal crusade against councils how they're underfunded and there isn't enough provision which we know from reading all the New Britain stuff is part and parcel of this whole empowering local councils and I would imagine that part of your minimum infrastructure guarantee, part of whatever they do with the new Equality Act, will probably be things like written guarantees for disability support. Well, the reason we'll move to this one is that a lot of these people come with activist baggage. Mm. A large problem with trying to integrate even a, a movement that is somewhat compatible with yours yeah. into yours is the, the general baggage a lot of these scenes come with. And uh, there's a huge amount of that with, you know, the radical feminists of, of yesteryear. Mm. There's a huge amount of, like I said, mum's nets, uh, just general fussing. They would not agree with you about things like the lockdowns. They certainly wouldn't agree with you, as we'll see on a lot of the stuff to do with, you know, immigration race. Yeah. These people are single issue. And outside of that single issue, they are still exactly the same as they were five years ago. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole thing about Democracy 3.0 we're going to go into in a minute. But the last thing about that Caroline Farrow woman is she also does weird tweets about her two sons who are supposedly very heavily autistic and sits there and whinges about the fact that the local council thinks they're doing too well in schools to put them in special needs schools where they would be treated like retards. And she's very annoyed about this, which all seems very wrong to me. But anyway, what I've noticed at the same time is there are all these what I will call quote unquote emergent legal cases coming up, and this is one of like the most self fulfilling ones I think you could find. Someone who's some woman that's come to the UK with her two kids, yeah, who's I believe is a single mother of course, to do a post PhD course studying the gender wars gets upended from our course and cancelled. Now of course, who were the first people to back this? The Free speech union right off the bat, and if we we could go through and read this because there's essay after essay that she's basically written in here as updates. But the end of the story is protect women's spaces, protect women's single sex rights, protect this, that, and the next thing, the Equality Act, i.e. not right-wing causes. The problem is, again, this is being pushed into all of our spaces. So if you believe, this is, this is why we tell you that asking for free speech doesn't matter. Because no. this is what they will fill your space up with. This is the free speech that will be given in in lead based free speech society, it will be endless arbitration about what the Equality Act means and backing up feminists from attack from from other activists, and that's what it's been already been turned into. You will see this shared by people who are otherwise considered like weird Lawrence yeah. Fox and Toby Young and all these people who we are supposed to see as somewhat akin to our allies. Yeah. We'll share this crap. I mean, here's another one. Civil servant and blew the whistle on political activism and wins £100,000 in a settlement. Of course, that settlement is based on emotional damage she has received throughout the process of being a whistleblower, which has its own therapy. Well, there's on. also the fact that she effect effectively the, uh, the civil service paid her a hundred grand to fuck off. Yes, this um, is also the They case. admitted no fault <laughs> as well. Well, uh, there's a bit I've quoted here uh, from the article, I've got it. Again, all of this makes news. There's a huge amount of effort and time put into this. These are not victories. Yeah. These largely are wastes of time. See, there's a there's a paragraph at some point in this as well. I want you to go back to that one because there's a couple of bits I want right. to pick out of if that's all right. She is, uh, is it after posting her concerns on the intranet, 
internally with yeah. her role within the uh, civil service. Uh, she faced a backlash from some colleagues. It felt a lot like gaslighting, she says. Comments saying that you're taking things out of context, you're being politically partial. That was quite disturbing to me because it's just like, this isn't fair. I didn't bring this stuff in. I'm telling you that this is not neutral at all. That woman did not write that bloody line. No. Some someone somewhere who is involved in like policy exchange level like think tank stuff has got that in there. Because yeah. that's too That's wrangling about it. those of you who don't know, there's a very big like fake hoodoo about the British civil service being neutral. Yes. In fact, it's one of the best tricks they can do, as we keep talking about. The most powerful person is he who sets the neutral position. Yeah. And also he sets the, uh, the uh, exceptions of the neutral position. But the, the definition of what is neutral, normal, and value-free is actually the most powerful political uh, definition. Yeah. Because mean, it shows you what is out of reach. Another point as well. The article attempts to portray the civil service as complacently allowing woke activists to do as they please. This just isn't true. They no. were welcomed in by their superiors. And the propaganda we've seen over the last five years has shown this. And if you go right to the bottom of the article, who do you think it's mentioned? Toby Young, director of the Free Speech Union, who of course supported the case. Anna's case shows how little tolerance there is in the civil service. <laughs> well, again, it's this is peak boxcar uh, door handling. Anyone who is involved with the UK civil service knows that it's an entity that has its own life to it. Yes. You cannot damage it through civil legislation. It's one of the most powerful institutions in Britain because it has a permanent presence no matter who is, quote-unquote, in power. And uh, This gives people also a very false sense of comfort about it, that they can slap it back into line by telling it not to be quite so woke, which is, again, a complete delusion. And we're looking at some of this stuff as well on Twitter. I happened to run into this website, which appears just to be... What I first thought as an aggregator, but is actually more aiming itself at being like some sort of pioneering NGO for NGOs. It's like you go to them with your campaign and your your civil rights case for why this that and the next tranny has besmirched some local institution or whatever it is, and they'll help you share it. They'll make sure it gets to the people at the Free Speech Union. Is basically what they're doing at the end of the day. And we can we could read through more of this, and I, I can't be arsed, because basically what they're saying is democracy is great, but what if everything was more democratic because we forced people to engage with the internet just constantly? Well, that seems to be almost exactly what they're talking about. And this website was set up by one Andrew Hawkins, who set up the polling firm Comres and was basically elevated to the position of being an arch-technocrat in about 1997, with obviously Blair's rise and the push for sort of polling intensive pressure group politics, which in a little memorandum I was reading about him himself the other day, he admits to, he said, well, Tony Blair was concerned about what the stakeholders had to say, and so was I. Well, this is basically like, it's like GoFundMe for gender critical slash culture war stuff. Yes. But very, very bent towards the gender critical stuff. It is very much a professional victim engine. This is, you know, really the... Uh, other side of the coin of I'm an unhoused trans person, I need money. Yeah. It's very much that vibe, but it also helps aggregate some of what is considered the the slice, the sphere, kind of the world that all of these cases inhabit. Mm. And the narrative that's being put forward of the, you know, the the heroics of the gender critical movement. It's it's quite a snappy little uh, little wrapper to it because it really shows where the headspace is. You know, democracy 3.0, digital activism. Uh, it's just all very grassroots. It's all populist. And that's what so much of this stuff also carries with it. It's people power. It's populism. It's local activism. All of this carries this framing and it's throughout all of it. Well, I mean, it's, it's the, the toxic combination is that, the one, two punch of that bundled with it being, you know, the gender critical feminist yeah. injected in by the I mean, we can, there's like the first case here they've got on their website, which just seems to be a bit generic, but is this woman suing a local ledger centre because they won't come down on what the civil rights argument for the Equality Act is? Is it for trannies or is it for women? Now, she's basically turning around to her local ledger centre and being like, 
damned if you do, you damned if you don't. You don't answer, I'm taking you to court. You answer either way, someone else will take you to court. Yeah. Well, a lot of the legal strategy is to try and put these institutions in an impossible position to force a judgment from the government via the Equality Act. But that is fundamentally a mistake from from what we would want. Yes. That is the opposite of what we want. This is directly empowering both the UK government and the Equality Act in bringing it into a kind of a fair, neutral position. Uh, yeah, zone. I mean, it answers the question. Who wins out here and who decides who wins? Yeah. And at the same time, we've got... Um, we can go on to the next one, which is one that was going around for a good while. I can't. Is this is this Sarah V. Fillmore woman that I think does some of the good cop stuff? Stop tech censoring women. Help me sue Eventbrite. Well, it seems that this one's now completed, so we can't read the description. But it doesn't matter because all we need to know is that this woman. Oh no, we've got uh, a spiked article here, written by her as well. Yes, this woman who set up an event on Eventbrite, where Eventbrite tells you if you're advertising your event, don't make it political. Yeah. She advertised her event, very specifically put in it, gender critical, turf, you know, all these different loaded terms. Even and then Eventbrite came around and said, could you please remove those from your campaign? We'll allow you to advertise your event, but keep the politics stuff separate. And she went, no, you're silencing me. <laughs> so someone came in, deliberately broke a terms of service, which, by the way, even Just Stop Oil has to skirt. They yeah. have to make their advertisements very generic or else they would get thrown off the site. Um, that's very heavy rain. But, yeah, this, again, it's a nothing burger. It's them deliberately getting into a legal fight with a tech platform to Sorry. accomplish I can't nothing. Hear you. I can't hear you over the rainfall at Checkpoint Charlie on the <laughs> Dung River. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, uh, what, what will suing Eventbrite for you, and then losing, because you deliberately broke their terms of service and would what, not do you know what reword it does? something with it? It wastes tens of thousands of pounds of people who could otherwise support it different cases. I mean, here's another one that's just finished as well. And this is one I thought was a very interesting link. Here's this website with all this, uh, you know, te- pro-turf stuff on it. And at the same time, here's something that the the government would want as a campaign. You know, oh, well, of course it looks good if you're not wanting children near porn. And that's something everyone can obviously agree with. But does that necessitate then having biometric age verification for access to the internet? I'm not so sure. And we know for a fact that something like that has to be part of the digital ID sort of framework. So for that to be there beside all this turf stuff, to me, is almost a sort of perfect example of how these two agendas are very closely fusing into the one. Yes. It also seems that they have relatively curated control over what goes on here. Well, that's why the next... Is it the, the next one we've got? Oh, no, it's the Andrew Brigden one after that. Yep. Uh, the day democracy died again this is this is a big see i don't even care for the content of this i just think if you're involved in this case you're an idiot yeah because it just all smacks of like a weird tory project to me uh then the next one we've got after that is there asleep at the wheel Uh, uh, one which is this is again this idea that uh the civil service and uh, education institutions and this, that, and the next thing were all these different departments that just were complacent and allowed all this stuff to just come in, you know, unawares and had no idea what was going on. But actually, we know farewell all this time, these people were welcomed in. But what makes it more interesting to me is that this uh, asleep at the wheel sort of project comes directly from the policy exchange. Yes. There's a lot of... It does not really raise much money yet, but this is an activist donation vertical from a think tank project by Policy Exchange, which is the biggest, I believe, think tank in Britain since it was resurrected. Yeah, and I mean, if you scroll down here, there is a direct endorsement of this white paper by bloody Nadim Zahawi, or whatever his name is. Yeah, 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 here we go. Here's the... We, we found the Tory MPs always lurking behind all of this. I mean, the... I would at some point like to go through that PDF more thoroughly because I think there's probably a lot in there that's interesting. But yeah. just as a simple point, we know all of this has a therapeutic lens to it and we can very easily see why wouldn't they use the narrative of safeguarding to then transfer into online safety stuff where now you're safeguarding harmful content. I believe that that will be part of it at some point. But yes, there's there's a... 
a a lot of this has been coming down the pipeline because, like I said, woke is being put away with the help of the think tanks and the Tory MPs. All of them will give themselves a pass on the back, and most of all, will drown you out. Uh, we're going to quickly skip over as well. I put it in the notes, and you're probably right to say we might not have enough time because I, I do notice we've got a lot left here still. A guy called James S. will feature one of his tweets in a little bit, but he runs a, a different thing called Thoughtful Therapists, which was, of course, signal boosted by the Democracy 3.0 people, within which it seems to me like he's engaging in a PR campaign so that the agitation around this stuff doesn't result in child psychologists getting their heads cut off. There's a lot of different people attempting to wash their hands and wash their profession's hands of what was done over the last five years. Yes. Um, we mentioned the online safety bill earlier because there have been some connections towards it. It's been mentioned. The Equality Act especially has been extolled, but the online safety bill has been mentioned the same breath as you know keeping women and girls safe. But there was a lot of coverage, and this all goes into the same circles a lot of the gender-critical stuff does. If you look at any of these gender-critical verticals, you look at any of them that are specifically not from people like Unheard or Spiked, you will see a lot of this stuff. You'll see a lot of the discussion of the online safety bill. You'll see a lot of discussion of the government needing to ban pornography, um, but in a very kind of nimby, clueless way. Yes. Um, uh, you'll also see some of the almost like Keith Woodsian stuff of actually the online safety bill is based guys and things like that. Trust uh, Biden's our guy, trust the plan Ugh. level stuff in, in some places but, too. You're right though, because I, I was looking at the tweet thread about the Equality Act, which are currently debating today, and yeah. some women in Parliament ma made this point. I was like, well, the problem with the online safety bill is it doesn't go far enough because it doesn't explicitly use the word women. Yes. Well, again, the online safety bill could leave women and girls behind. We absolutely cannot let that happen. The thing is, it does... I th I think they are trying to find a way to explicitly put the word woman in there, but this is a large part of the coverage. Again, the Daily Mail, supposedly a rattling outlet. Um, oh, I, I, I appear to have not opened one of my links here. Uh, where is that poor... Uh, Big tech must let gender critics speak under online safety law. Hmm. Again, this is a direct one of them, uh, as we say, haggling with the box car door. Social media giants will be told to focus on rooting out racist abuse and trolling rather than debates on trans rights under a revamped online harms bill to be published tomorrow. So this is specifically saying that, don't worry, guys, you can be a turf online. We're just going after, you know, the mean racists who don't like immigration very much. It's so blatant and so plain how it's being said here, how it's being fed to you when you actually look at it from the other direction mm. rather than going, oh, well, the online safety bill is bad, but they're, they're taking some of the bad out of it. It's like, no, the online safety bill is aimed yeah. surgically to <clears throat> miss the the effect of Overton window. Yeah. It is surgically designed to miss the issues that are the neutral point of the day, as we'll get into well, in our next stream. Something I want to mention as well here, and I, I do this to name no names and call no people out, but I see no one out there connecting the dots with any of this stuff, and they still spend day in, day out, and sometimes signal boosting these people. You know, Constantly. Engaging with their stuff online, and sometimes even having them on their own platforms. Uh, again, I don't understand why this stuff is not cut away like a cancer. Yeah. Because there is not only connections to the establishment, it's just old-fashioned feminism. Like, second-wave, terrible bra-burning feminism. That's all this is. Why aren't you letting these activists well, see, kill each that's other? That's the thing, though. It's not just bra-burning feminism. No. Because behind the bra-burning feminist distraction yeah. is all the technocrats who are playing both sides of the... Well, the issue it, it to lead, get what they want. It leads you on your edgy, dissident right-wing platform to boost people and steer people in the direction of those who would tell you to uh, to you know back up the Equality Act to make the Equality Act great again, basically. Oh no, um, you're going to be. Do you do realize like like Dan Harwood and all these kind of people will actually be posting that. 
Oh, dear. A huge pillar of this project is the reframing of the Equality Act as neutral and even conservative as a piece of legislation that is vital to holding back the gender insanity with government definitions, lest we fall into madness. Otherwise, we might lose our marbles, yeah. they say. Well, the, the the whole thing when we talked to, you know, um, Cat, when we talked to uh, Philosopher Cat, yes. was the fact that governments don't define what women are. No. They are something that is apart from all of that. They are not a simple legal or biological category. And to reduce them to that is to surrender to modernity. The Equality Act does that and then so. Um, <laughs> and, or, and they want it to be even more strict. They want yeah. it to be even more sort of materialist and written almost in, in law as if it were scripture. There's also the very, very obvious point that I hope people, you know, realize that if the government can define what a woman is, it can redefine what a woman is at a whim. Yes. And of it course. means that there is a legal government definition that supersedes what we would consider the wider kind of societal concept or the older concept of what a woman is. They've done this with so many different things that were not legislated for. Yes. And that's how law balloons. Identifying everything. Again, there's uh but this is what they're saying. Don't bow down to trans lobby of women's rights. MPs to urge ministers ahead of longer wait to parliamentary debate on equality laws being rewritten on the basis of biology rather than gender identity. This is posited as the conservative position. And again, that is the power here. This is what is being spoken for you. Mm. And a lot of people who do not understand the implications of what the Equality Act is, what the Equality Act does and how it is the biggest stick used to beat the political right in Britain will simply nod along with this. Uh, especially when someone like open democracy is really trying to play the heel here. Yes. Like they're really reaching with this one. This is deliberately them being unpleasant. Uh, the EHRC, which is basically just a council in the UK that tells us how we interpret the Human Rights Act, yes. uh, wants to redefine sex. Here's what it means for trans people. Opinion. Proposal to rewrite the Equality Act is part of the right's ideological war on trans people's right to exist. And uh. that's not I aimed at discrediting it. That is actually aimed at bolstering it. Yes. You must understand that these people are deliberately hysterical and are made to look ridiculous on purpose because it's meant to bolster what the correct position is. <clears throat> this is classic, classic heel behavior in a political sense. This is music to the ears of people who believe all the spiked articles and believe all the spectator articles. They're and believe... saying exactly what they said would yeah. happen. And wow, the, the leftists sure hate those turfs. That must mean that they're based. It's the Again, the oldest trick in the book. It's just a waffling article about the fact that, you know, this can't happen, you can't do this to us. But it's also a sign that this has been in the pipeline for quite a while. Uh, the letter was written, I believe, late last year and was only published early this year. Uh, but it was Kemi Blaylock, who's like the minister oh, for Oh, it's Kemi Bandanok. Whatever her name is, yeah. yeah. Uh, which has led to today's debate. Um, with a, a lot of hoo-ha about it. I actually saw that Equality Act was trending earlier even though my current account is uh, suspended. But today's parliamentary debate on the definition of sex under the Equality Act will provide important clarity as to whether many of our politicians and political parties actually care about women's rights, free speech, and child welfare. So again, a lot of political heavy lifting done here. I don't know who this James S's guy is. I think he's just some thoughtful therapist. Is that the same guy? Yes, this is why I connect with all this stuff, all right. because all of a sudden he's on Talk TV, he's on LBC, he's on GB News, Elon Musk is caught tweeting him. Just like that, just in the space of a week or two. He's never a, heard of the guy before. He's another one of these kind of anti-woke professional victims who has a single belief in a single area that would have been completely uncontroversial five years ago, and he's being elevated as an ideological hero against the insanity of the left. But the bundling of women's rights, free speech, and child welfare should tell you what is attempting to be, to be done. That all of these issues are taped together, that if you are quote-unquote anti-trans and anti-woke, you are in some ways now pro-sensible feminism. And that is the trick. 
and then we'll keep pointing the trick out because it's it's obvious, but a lot of people don't seem to spot it, and there isn't as much discussion about it. Well, this is the thing: who's going There's around other than debate. us at this exact moment making the point about this? I mean, at best, what you get is there's a certain subset of people who will sort of dismiss this. But no one seems to want to connect that the, all of this is all moving as one kind of big thing. And there very much is an agenda behind it that is aimed at things that we do not want. Yes. I just, I, I don't know, it's, it's not to sit there repeatedly going, why is no one talking about this? But it genuinely, it's... I would like to think that normally we're at least able to bring a few people in and maybe anyone else other than A, I've never really seen any sort of treatment of this in this way. Again, uh, uh, quite a popular Twitter account called Sex Matters. Uh, the definition of sex. Make the Equality Act clear. Please, Equality Act harder. The Equality Act will save us. I, it's I, Spikes Andrew Doyle, of course. It spikes Andrew Doyle, yes. Who's and he got on there? Who are these? H. Joyce Gender. What's... That is... Uh, Helen Joyce. Uh, is that not the one that ends up on Lotus Eaters? I can't remember. Um, uh, Andrew Doyle, again, Heather B., whoever that is, and the Women's Rights Network, which basically it's GB That's News. a right-wing think tank these days, don't you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> With the uh, suffragette colours. But it's, like, it's, it's, the, it's the final victory of, of the... Uh, actually, the suffragettes were conservatives, guys. Um, and it's just uh, once again GB News putting forward uh, far left seventies talking points. <laughs> As you said, this is basically like what would have been a mum's net forum conversation. Yeah. No astroturf as a nation gripping media and political. Uh, I don't know. I I would say farce, but obviously. The idea is to have it be a much bigger thing than that. <laughs> it's just, it's the culmination of five years of fever pitch. What is a, define a woman. What is a woman? Def- it's, they've become so dependent on this kind of platform of, of, of political dialectic that they are, one, unable to get out of it now that it's kind of falling down, and two, they are trying to squeeze every last drop out of it while they still have it. Well, see, what if, what if large aspects of the left wing decided to drop the trans thing tomorrow? Yeah. And pick up the next issue. You know, what do all these people who have spent all this time and energy combating this then do? What does what does Mash Matt Walsh go on to do after this? Now that he spent all this time doing what is a woman documentary? That's the whole again, that's the whole point we make that when all of this is cycled out, as it is doing, mm. what you will be left with is a coalition of people that effectively have nothing in common and will collapse. Yes. Of like what was done to the seventies feminists. They the the women's movement in quotes in the UK without government backing completely fell apart because of its innate ideological differences within it. The only thing that really united them was their hate of men. Um, and once we get into the 80s and a lot of the quote-unquote equality issues have been put away in a cultural sense, all of that kind of falls by the wayside. There was a massive fallow period in the 1980s for the feminist movement, or at least in a cultural sense. And that's a very good example of the fact that this stuff can just be put away. It has been put away before, very successfully. Um, and it can be picked back up on. But here we get Women's Place UK. Thank you, Sex Matters Org, for successfully tabling today's Westminster debate and clarifying sex between biological sex and the Equality Act. And there'll be a lot of people who consider themselves conservatives who've retweeted this or have engaged with people who have been amplifying this message. They'll be talking about Sex Matters. You know, Sex Matters on GB News, the supposedly premier right wing news outlet. And Here's, here's uh, Women's Place UK's explanation of why they care so much about gender issues. Why do we keep banging on about the importance of single-sex spaces for women who have been subjected to men's violence? Asterix. Is, yeah. Most violence is committed by men. Males commit 78% of violence. Males commit 88% of the partner homicides. Males commit 90% of all murders in England and Wales. Males commit 98% of recorded sexual Maybe offense. Maybe we just keep all the women at home. Well, the whole point is that they they would they would be very willing to discuss the fact that these people are men, but once you mention to them what color these men are, yes, they immediately begin to shriek at you, and that 
is the crux of why this unholy marriage is not only untenable, it is completely suicidal. Oh, of this course, these are the same people with. who would campaign for migrant and refugee rights as part of women's rights. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the, the problem is, as Reaction Reading Law has been saying in the chat, that uh, anyone you can't get confirmative ac- affirmative action when everyone's there then. No. You, you can't actually play off the two groups against each other when there are no more groups. That's, that's what you said. That's why they won't dispense with the conservatives and why they won't dispense with the identities that they've performers have been attacking because it's so powerful and so, uh, you know, lucrative for them. Well, it's, it, it's easy. You just apply these different sort of value-laden labels to all these things and then you don't have to engage in any form of explanation or describing complex political conflicts, you just see those people are bad. They're X. They're Y. They're Z. It's, it's you know, I think it's, it's one of the most simple parts of rhetoric, really. At the end of the day. Well, here's Maya Forrest, who has her header as "Make the Equality Act Clear." I don't know if you've noticed her. Uh, there's the other woman that does the like "Equality Matters" one, which is very yeah. similar, and it, both of them seem to be like Rachel Dolezal style, like white women that could maybe ever so slightly pass as blacks. It's very strange. But that's a completely different aside issue, though. Well, again, here's somebody who's extolled as, as some form of almost conservative hero. I've, I've seen Maya Forrester mentioned multiple times in all of these outlets as, as this effectively stunning and brave figure. Um, on sex, gender, and the law, the debate tomorrow is about whether the government should clarify the law to make clear that having a gender recognition certificate does not change someone from male to female and vice versa for the purposes of the law on sex discrimination. The problem with that sentence is that it also implies that, that the government is the arbiter of who is a man and a woman, <laughs> which which really you're you're asking for them to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a self defeating argument because the Equality Act yeah uh, sorry ex- just does that. Excuse me, ma'am. I am the government sex discrimination czar. Please show me your bob and vagina to prove to me <laughs> that you oh. are what you say you are. Oh dear, the uh, the pajits are evolving. Exactly. Friendly I mean, this is like the one they had in the, the American stuff that almost yeah. to me seemed like a, a piss take. Yeah. When they were like, well, of course, the policy now to make sure that students that are entering the changing rooms at school is to check, check them at, at age 13 and 14 and have an adult see them naked to make sure they're not trans. It's like, well, come on. That's got to be a... A joke. And that's, right. as you're saying, that's what she's asking for here. Meanwhile, get the George Bush mission accomplished banners out. Once again, the the gender critical movement is going around high-fiving itself about the fact that the NHS have apparently banned puberty blockers for children outside of clinical research. And here's, here's, here's your daily, like, massive black pill, honestly. Like... Here's, here's the thing that a lot of people, well, I don't think anybody really has discussed about this supposed victory in rooting out the uh, the giving of puberty blockers to children. It has nothing to do with law. This <laughs> was n- a never an approved practice. It was never unbanned. They have not done anything. I'll tell you what, I'll explain it to you. Do you know what I find a tad interesting? Just think about the language here for a moment. I know we've got the Elon Musk, him quote tweet. Oh, I've I've got the report here. But think of the language here. The NHS have banned. Who is the NHS? It can't be all of the people in the organisation, because that would take too long to decide. It, It can't just be one person. So maybe what we expect, a room full of 10, 15 people, British Medical Journal, those people who really decide what policy is. So it actually turns out, all this time, there's been no there's been no actual internal resistance with the NHS, with, or within the NHS, to stop you banning this, in theory. Which and then the NHS just turns around and bans it. It's like, well... What stopped those 10, 15 well, people from doing this before? What's happened is there was something called the CAST Review, which is an independent review of gender identity services for children and young people. Um, basically, the NHS set up a working group called the, uh, the CAST Review, which has issued a preliminary report on the, uh, the provision of gender care for under-18s. It doesn't talk about the fact that there shouldn't be, <laughs> there shouldn't be 
in most cases, the 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 quote unquote gender care fund area teams. Um, and that, again, there's been a lot of um, celebrating about the end, quote unquote, end of affirmative care and all of this and the end of the Tavistock, Tavistock shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the stuff about that. I, we don't have it to hand. We don't really have time for it today about all the Tavistock stuff and the links with Mermaid and the fact that they just completely run rampant and effectively the NHS did have an activist-led, NGO-controlled medical experiment project that they were using to very, very loudly and very publicly begin like transitioning children. Mm. A completely rogue, by the way. This could have been shut down. At any point. That's, fact, what, I mean, that's yeah. what I mean. When he's like, the NHS has decided, it's like, well, so those 10, 15 people could have at any point put their hand up and said, no, that's enough of this. But they waited till now to do it. It's like, hmm, I see. Meanwhile, of course, you've yeah, Elon Musk saying, quote, The whole the transitioning of kids was solely down to the decision of individual doctors who acted on their own will. The, again, see, they were waiting for more detail on the specifics. This has been a clinical area in which there isn't any precedent. There's so therefore, all of the prescribing of puberty blockers to under-18s was by definition off-label and experimental. Well, it's... Because there is no clinical trial data and there is no approval by anybody like the equivalent that we have of the FDA or the drug regulator from the NHS. None of this ever went through the proper channels. Well, therefore, just... it can't be banned because it was never approved. And what I was going to say... We can look at it as if it's extra legal. Yes. You know, it exists, this whole project exists above and beyond medical standards, and they've known that's how it's worked the whole, the whole time. And I don't know if we want to get further into this. We, we do, yes. The, uh, but, that's why I wanted to make sure there was time. Well, no, no, that's fair um, enough. But, let, let me just read you the summary here, because you'll start to get the idea very quickly. Uh, the cash review was submitted as an interim report at NHS England, which sets out. Uh, our work to date. This has been learned so far and our approach going forward. The report does not set out final recommendations at this stage. Um, at present, there is a single specialist service providing gender identity services for children and young people, the Gender Identity Development Service, GIDS, at the Tavistock and, and Portman NHS Foundation Trust, which has effectively been shut down as a circus. In recent years, GIDS has experienced a significant increase in referrals, which has contributed to long waiting times and growing concern about how the NHS should most uh, should most appropriately assess, diagnose, and care for this population of children and young people. Are you starting to get the idea yet? The rapid increase in the number of children requiring support and complex care uh, mix means that the current clinical model with a single national provider is not sustainable in the long term. We need to know more about the population being referred and outcomes. There has not been a routine and consistent data collection. It means this is not possible to accurately track the outcomes and pathways that children and young people take through the service. Yeah, look at the... the There's a lack of consensus and open discussion about the nature of gender dysphoria and therefore the appropriate clinical response. Because the specialist services evolve so rapidly and organically in response to demand, the clinical approach and overall serve design has not been subjected to some of the normal quality controls that are typically applied when new or innovative treatments are introduced. Key points and recommendations moving forward. Children and young people with a gender uh, incongruence or dysphoria must receive the same uh, standards of clinical care, assessment and treatment as every other child or young person accessing health care. The care of this group of children and young people is everyone's business. <laughs> <laughs> Our initial work indicates that clinicians at all levels feel they have the transferable skills and commitment to support these children and young people, but there needs to be agreement and guidance about the appropriate clinical assessment process. That should take place at primary, secondary, and tertiary level, underpinned by better data and evidence. Addressing the challenges will require service transformations with support offered at different levels of the health service. The review's research program will not, uh, will not just build uh, evidence, based in the UK, but will also contribute to the global evidence base, meaning that young people, their families, carers, and the clinicians supporting them can make more informed decisions about the right path for them. Does that sound like an excoriation of the gender movement by a man? It doesn't even sound like they're stopping. What they're actually saying is, let's shut down Tavistock and move this thing nationwide. Let's have provisions for this, not just in like GICs or GIDs or whatever they want to call it. Let's have provisions for this everywhere. 
Well, there's only been really kind of one test um, for the legality, in quotes, of the... Uh, Is this of... the Gillick Compton's one that we talked about in Buddy uh, Rose's stream ages ago? Yes, it is. It? Yeah. Um, this is the whole point that the only legal objection that was brought against the, the use of blockers in children wasn't like a medical malpractice tribunal. It was a a born loser case, I would say, about the competency of under 16s to consent to medical care in the abstract. Mm. The reason this case didn't work and the reason that Court of Appeal overturned it is because the implications for wider uh, kind of child care within the NHS would have been a complete legal headache. Mm. They, this was the wrong approach to take because it's, le- it's not a treatment argument. It's a blanket legal competency argument. And here's, to cap it off, here's how Pink News is reporting it. NHS to stop prescribing puberty blockers for children struggling with their gender identity. NHS England is uh, said it is rescinding uh, routine puberty blocker prescription which it never authorized. Because it was never routine. Yeah. <laughs> After arguing that more evidence is needed about potential benefits and harms. So more research needs to be done, which means they're going to carry on the tests that they were doing before anyway. S- stating it would only allow under 18s to receive puberty blockers in exceptional circumstances, so there is a get out clause here, or under a study looking into their with effects. Under the new rules, go back for a second there, yeah. under the new rules with the, which the NHS described as an interim policy, the medication would only be accessible after further research outlies the impact they have. And so they have to use it to decide whether or not they're going to use it. And again, they're talking... It's just, they're just saying that. <laughs> um, regional model for gender care announced for children and young people. This is the GIDS. This is Gender Identity Development Service. Uh, they talk about the fact that they're closing Tavistock but opening up basically four different child gender clinics uh, attached to hospitals. And you're right, what's been done here is that Tavistock has been shut down. The, 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 the sex hormones have been banned. But what's really happened is that gender care for young people has expanded. It has not contracted. As I, as I basically just wrote here, again, the only legal test for the prescription practice was a competency to consent case, which was designed to be lost as it would potentially affect all <clears> clinical <throat> care for the 18s. The judgment was not about blockers themselves, but about medical consent. What is being pointed at as a lack of clinical evidence, and the uh, what, so what is being pointed at as a lack of clinical evidence, and the few trans children already in the system will, by definition of this decision, be part of a medical research trial. Puberty blockers for children will continue under the added protection of clinical research and gender services. So, and gender services for children will expand banned beyond Tavistock, this is not being ended. Well, it's very much almost the crux of what we've said about so much of this stuff, which is the practice, the the process, the things we do in day-to-day life, whether it's woke or anti-woke, will not change. All that will change is the aesthetics of the astroturf operations that happen around us. Very dramatic. Very yes. dramatic thunder in the background there. But it's kind of a discussion point of view. It's, it's an amazing kind of hat tip about how the, the putting the woke away stuff really will work. I'm glad we managed to get through that for a... Well... An hour and 15 there. I think... uh, well, well, let's say this is all being transformed into a neutral evidence-based policy all whilst 1970s-style radical feminism is folded into the fabric of the right and credited with these fake conservative victories. Like I said, it's all just expanding. Like The, the, the whole uh, gender-specific care for trans kids stuff is getting bigger. It's not getting smaller. They're making it nationwide. They're actually doing clinical trials now. They're not just going rogue and doing it off their own back like Tavistock did because they did just completely go rogue. Um, when, and when no one's going to go to prison because of it, that should that should really uh, be the, the the kicker right there. Hmm. Is that by the rules of the NHS and by the rules of British medicine in general, supposedly what they did was likely highly illegal, which is what people have been pointing out. But instead of going to prison, they're going to be given big research grants. They're going to be told to study this, and guess what they'll find? They'll find that in all oh, the majority of cases, uh, gender affirming care for young people is a positive thing. 
And everyone will go, oh, well, as long as there's been the medical safeguards, as long as we've depoliticized it, it's an amazing act of depoliticization. Mm. They have effectively drawn a line under the Tavistock era of open child abuse and have turned open child abuse into a neutral process. It's, it's evil, but it is also very politically impressive. <laughs> yeah, I, I have basically nothing else to add to this other than I want to suggest anyone that sees people from our sphere, our friends, talking about this in a manner that leads them down or opens up the opportunity for this sort of thing to be inserted behind them, warn them. Yeah. If it means posting this or it means posting some synopsis of what we've said here. Please make it clear to the people that you have around you that this issue is a waste of time and that woke will go away and when woke goes away, almost nothing will change. Yep, that's we'll be talking on Wednesday about uh, anti-woke and a post-woke world, more of a specific wider discussion about this effect in the abstract. Um, thank you for everyone for coming. Uh, thank you for absorbing our uh, many nourishing black pills here, but I think this one's very necessary. Um, do go check out the Substack. We remember we're active over there. Do help us out with our costs if you can. Um, memberships are one of the better recurring ways. But like I said, the best way really is to support us through Substack or through, through PayPal. Um, I hope there's nothing we've really missed out. I think we've yeah. been quite comprehensive. As, I was say, it's been a bit of a sort of slightly quicker rambly one, but a lot of these things are given. And as we continue to do, we like setting up different elements so we can get to the point we are here where we can be like well look at these four different things and how they're all connected yeah and why the one central issue around them is astroturfed well we went to this is kind of a worked example of a single issue how ubiquitous it's come and how really they can set the conversation just by immersing the news cycle in an issue it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not the staple like 2013 GTAs making people rape women feminists into like effectively the post Gamergate right, which is what's going on when you see like a feminist on the Lotus Eaters. It is bizarre to witness this fusion, but is what's happened. You end up with, you know, people like Julie Bindle on GB News. It is, it's bizarre from somebody who understands what these people actually believe, but in the moment, as the ally of convenience. We managed to get through all of this by saying the enemy of our enemy is not necessarily your friend because that's such a truism. But that's really what this is. So once again, uh, Gibbs for you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Strew, for the two quid. Uh, that was a nice, fun sentence to say. Um, um, I we believe we're now going to go run outside in the rain and the thunderstorm. Yeah, we're going to have... Waiting the for the summer. <laughs> so we'll have the apocalypse now kick with it. Uh anyway guys, uh thank you guys for watching and do have a good night. Say good night. Good night.